So throughout this week we've been looking at uh, different ways of addressing your mobility, your strength in your shoulder and looking at different injuries that you could possibly have. We thought best to get out of the clinic at some point and actually speak to someone who knows what they're talking about from a practical point of view. So we're here at the Northampton County Ground today talking to uh, Steve Crook, a guy who's played a long time in, in professional cricket. He's played at Lancashire, Middlesex, Northampton, nearly as many counties as me. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, we just wanted to spend some time and see if he's got any practical kind of um, points to make to, to guys to see if uh, you can help um, improve your throwing and, and um, generally avoid injury. Yeah, Crookie, how are you doing? You all right? I'm very good, thanks. Good. Uh, cheers for having me on. No, thanks for coming, mate. Um, yeah, so you've played a long time in professional cricket. How many years is it now? Oh, I don't know, mate. Lost count. <laughs> <laughs> so you must have had a few shoulder injuries in the past, and uh, you've, you know, I'm sure you've had a grumbling shoulder throughout most of the time, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, to, to be to be perfectly honest, um, it, everything was going on until um, 2011, I think it was, and just randomly bowling in the warm up when I was playing for Middlesex, I, I just felt a pop in my shoulder, a bit of pain, and I thought, oh, geez, that's a bit sore. Um, carried on through through the rest of the year. I think there was probably three months to go and uh, just every time I was bowling it was agony for the first probably three or four deliveries. Um, throwing was, was not great either so um, at the end of that year I had a, had a scan and, and um, there was a tear in the labrum so I had that repaired and um, had another operation in, in um, I think it was 2016. Yep. Um, so I've had a few few problems um, and, and it's uh, you know it's obviously affects as soon as you have that sort of injury it affects your uh, your technique your uh, I guess your, your confidence and, and a lot of other things so mm. yeah I certainly struggled a little bit with some shorter stuff <laughs> <laughs> so you've had to uh, think quite a lot about your throwing technique and, and ways to go about um, you know building back up I suppose you've had a large chunk of time off. Yeah. Well, maybe not a large chunk of time. You probably want a bit more, but uh, without throwing for say a month or six weeks. And yeah. so, have you had to approach it differently to build back up into throwing this, this yeah. time? Yeah, I mean, as as uh, I guess uh, through operations, you, you have an extended period of time off anyway. But as, as you build that back up, um, you know, it's very conscious of making sure I'm doing all the all the right rehab, all the right prehab. Um, but yeah, as as you build up into it, I guess I. I probably naively underestimated the uh, what what sort of impact it was younger. The um, you know the recover recovery times a bit quicker, um, probably a bit uh, a bit bullish with with certain things. But um, I, it's you know for me now I, I sort of realised that it does take a bit longer and and the focus on the technique, particularly in throwing, mm. is is hugely important. Um, you know I've I've had to really think about what sort of my my, my pre-game routines yeah. um, pre-practice routines pre-throwing routines even in the even in the outfield I'm doing a lot of um, stuff to, to make sure that you know you're not always throwing. yeah yeah because so, that's it you've got a long time where you stood around not potentially doing absolutely. much and then all of a sudden you're asked to throw one at 100 miles an hour yeah. and um, yeah. and that could be the difference between a wicket and not a wicket mm. um, so it's making sure that I guess that I'm ready in in all situations to deal with it um, great yep and and I, I guess over time you learn the process and what works and what doesn't work and and then how you can get yourself ready f for that yeah cool well we could sit here and talk all day about you know different yeah. ways of that you you've thought of of getting through that but essentially just for the guys watching this is there is there any three things maybe three is too many i don't know but is there three <laughs> things or, or the main key points for someone that you might be coaching because i'm sure you've done a bit of coaching in your time yeah three things to focus on or to look at from a, a throwing technique point of view that uh, that might help somebody to, to either improve performance with their throwing or yeah. also just to sort of prevent or reduce the chance of getting an injury? Um, I think the, the um, it's a difficult one because obviously every, people have different techniques but I guess the, 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 the main thing for me is making sure that my elbow is, is, is above my shoulder. Yep. Um, or, or equal to my shoulder, okay. um, because if it gets low, it puts a lot of for me it puts a lot of pressure on on the joints and yeah. where I've had the repairs. So um, you know, cool. I'd say that that is a a, a big thing. Yeah. Um, so so making sure the elbow is above. Um, also, not getting too far 
behind my okay. behind my head. Yeah. Because um, again, that for, for me personally, that puts a lot of pressure on um, on, on the shoulder. Uh, so making sure that sort of it, it, it stays in a in a position that's not a little bit further forward. A little bit further forward, and and the the, the arm is probably equal, if not a bit yeah, higher than, absolutely. than, than the yeah. shoulder. Um, and it's something I focus on that now. And so I I um, I know you said three points. But yeah, two. <laughs> two's fine. Um, two's fine. But I, I I work on that technique every day. It's, yeah, it's yeah. It's not something that I just go I assume that it's going to happen. It, I, I work on that technique every day. We throw probably 30, 40 balls at least every day. Right. Um, but just to make sure that you know the technique is high. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be the intensity, but actually the technique is incredibly important yeah and making sure that that's that's bang on every time and i've just found your third point there as well is what you just said there about throwing regularly throwing all the time yeah. using it as a bit of a dosage and trying to get yeah. throwing into your arm will help to pre prevent these injuries yeah. and detraining and, and improve the conditioning of that shoulder to throwing so yeah. there's, your, there's your third point well there you go it's, yes <laughs> it's, i guess it's a workload isn't it you can't absolutely ex expect peaks in workload yeah when, when um you know, if, if you're doing nothing for a few days Definitely. and then going into high intensity, a lot of throwing, it's going to bring on problems. Whereas Absolutely. if you're consistent with it, yeah. it's, it's, it's um, you know, prevents that sort of stuff. Cool. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to uh, talk through uh, a bit more practical stuff of how to progress throwing through the, the gears, really, from that low stage back through to throwing at 100 miles an hour. Um, but Crookie, thanks very much for your time there, mate. All right. So cheers, man. Cheers, pal. So yeah, in a kneeling position there, Crookie is just going to literally lob it out. All right, so we're just using the, the shoulder here. Just a bit of a rebound with the partner. Taking the hips out of it. Literally just getting a bit of rotation through the shoulder. There, not, no great power. Just enables you just to sort of build up into it as much as you, uh, you feel you can. Then Crookie's just gonna slowly just increase that amount of rotation he's getting through the middle of his back so now you're just combining the shoulder and the back obviously in a kneeling position we're taking the hips out of it and again just build into it as much as you can not really looking at distance here all right and then Crookie's going to get to his feet thanks Crookie a bit stiff mate you just pulled a few overs <laughs> and then we're going to go through the same kind of things all right so again first of all just working through the shoulder Again, no hips involvement, not much through the middle of the back. All right, and then I'm, yeah, thanks mate, this is hurting my hands, they've gone soft. <laughs> and then last, I'm just gonna shift around here, Crookie's just gonna rotate up to me. And then we're gonna go with a bit more rotation through the middle of the back. That's it, so we can then start to build a little bit more power, a little bit more distance on the throw. Like that. And then as we build, I've not got a mitt on here, Crookie. This is going to hurt. <laughs> oh, thanks, mate. And then we're just going to sort of get the hips involved as well. Nice. Just bounce it into your partner. And the key thing here is just building, like Crookie said in the interview, just building up throughout, trying to increase the distance, increase the power. Don't go in at 100 miles an hour. Don't go in trying to throw 50 meters. Um, and then build up as you, as you feel you're able to. And that's about it. Thanks, mate. On ya. Yeah.